Happy birthday, Jesus. I'm so glad it's Christmas. All the tinsel and lights. Lessons are nice, but the real gift is you. Make the holiday swells, but the real value. Happy birthday, Jesus. Jesus, I love you. I love you, Jesus.
Well, welcome to Shoreline's fourth annual Hanging of the Greens, and we're bringing Advent in uh, with the Hanging of the Greens, and so we're excited about what God's going to do during this season, and I hope for you and for me that this season draws us closer to the Lord than maybe we've ever been before. And so we're excited to have Ann Baston and uh, Katie uh, Baston Mims leading our worship tonight, and really it's about hope this year. And I, I'll be honest with you, with all that's been going on in the world the last couple of years, I don't know how we can make it without hope. But Romans chapter 4 verse 18 says, In hope he, Abraham, believed against hope that he should become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. Well, we have hope because it's been spoken. God's promised it. He said, put your faith and trust in my son, and I'll give you not only eternal life, but I'll give you joy and contentment, and I'll give you hope. And I hope that tonight, if you've come here and you, for some reason, have, seem to have lost your hope, I hope that before you leave, you regain that hope. And if you've never really had it, I really hope that tonight you'll get it. Ladies. Would you stand with us as we sing? Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Opened my eyes, let me see. Ephesians 1, 17 through 19, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Matthew 12, verse 21. And in his name, the Gentiles will hope. Christmas is one of the most hopeful of all celebrations. Tonight, we will focus on the truth of hope that the coming of Christ brought to us as well as the hope and knowledge of the second coming we anticipate so anxiously. The blessed first coming of the Christ, who we know as Lord, Messiah, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father, is an awesome, joy-filled celebration of life, given to us by partaking in the hope we have in our relationship with a holy, almighty God 
through Jesus Christ as our Savior and in fellowship with other believers. Today, we begin the season of Advent by reminding ourselves of the birth of Christ and most importantly, during these troubled times, the hope of his return. Each of the decorations we present this evening will speak of the many special symbols of the season. In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are stilled, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. No guilt in Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe. This gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin on him was laid. Here in the death of Christ I live. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I stand. Here in the power of Christ I stand. Thank you, Lord Jesus. One of the most beautiful and meaningful traditions of the Christmas season is the lighting of the Advent candles. Each Sunday, for the four consecutive Sundays prior to Christmas, a candle will be lit. Each candle is representative of one of the promises that scriptures give us about life as a child of the King. The first candle is a candle of hope. Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. He is our hope, the hope that brings joy and peace. 
Romans 15, 5 through 13. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, receive ye one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God, to confirm the promises made unto the fathers, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, for this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles, and sing unto thy name. And again he saith, Rejoice, ye Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and laud him, all ye people. And again, Esaias saith, There shall be a root of Jesse, and he shall rise to reign over the Gentiles. In him shall the Gentiles trust. And now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost.
The second candle is the candle of peace. Peace, the priceless gift that Christ gives to all who are willing to place their trust and faith in him. Peace that is far beyond our understanding in the face of the trials and heartaches and the current uncertainties of this world. Jesus, the Prince of Peace, the most treasured gift we will ever be given. Isaiah 9, verses 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Stand with us as we sing. candle is the candle of joy. It reminds us of the deep-seated assurance that someone loves and understands who we are and what we face each day. Joy, which is unspeakable and full of hope and glory because Christ lives within each of us. Psalm 16. Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my Lord. My goodness extendeth not to thee, but to the saints that are in the earth, and to the excellent, in whom is all my delight. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer 
nor take up their names into my lips. The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoice. My flesh shall also rest in hope. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life, and thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Stand with us as we sing Joy to the World. Joy to the World, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. candle is the candle of love. The light of this pink candle is meant to remind us of the love that God has for each one of us. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 1 John 4, verse 9. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. O oh, come, all you unfaithful, come, we can unstable come. No, you are not alone. Oh, come, barren and waiting ones, weary of praying, come, see what your God has done. Christ is born. is born, Christ is born for you. Oh, come, bitter and broken, come, with fears unspoken, come, taste of his birth. Guilty and hiding ones, there is no need to run. See what your God has done. Christ is born. Christ is born. Christ is born. He's the Lamb who was given. He 
slain for our pardon his promise is peace for those who believe he's the lamb that was given slain for our pardon his promise is peace for those who so come, though you have nothing, come. He is the offering, come. Come see what God has done. Christ is born. Christ is born. Christ is born. Christ candle, the center. Final candle is lit on Christmas Eve. The central location of the Christ candle reminds us that the incarnation, the manifestation of God in Christ, is the heart of this season, giving light to the entire world. The light reminds us that Jesus comes into the darkness of our lives to bring newness of life and hope. The Messiah was indeed born into the world and walked among the people of the earth, giving us hope of things to come and the hope and fulfillment of our salvation in Christ Jesus. God so the world God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoso believeth believeth in him
God so loved the world. God so loved the world. Our first decoration is the garland. The strand of garland represents the immeasurable lengths that Christ went to in order that we might know him. Its evergreen color speaks of the everlasting hope we have in God. Luke 2, verses 1 through 7. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went out from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Please stand with us. garland is also a representation of the garland of love that, were that was used in a traditional Jewish wedding ceremony to show the continuity of a commitment that Jesus promises the bride, a promise that he will come again and bring us to himself. Isaiah 6 verses 1 through 3 and 10 through 11. Isaiah says, the spirit of Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, 
that he might be glorified. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me in the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and a bride adorneth herself with jewels. For as to the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causeth the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all nations. I was lost in shame, could not get past my blame until he called my name. I'm so glad he changed me, darkness held me down, but Jesus pulled me out and I'm no longer bound. I'm so glad he changed me, see I, now a new creation in Christ. The old has gone, there's new life. I live by faith, not by sight. a new name written down in glory and it's mine yes it's mine i've met the author of my story and he's mine yes he's mine sin had left me blind but jesus opened my eyes now i see the light I'm so glad it changed me. Now I'm walking free. I've got the victory. See, it's all over me. I'm so glad it changed me. See, I'm now a new creation in Christ. I owe it by faith, not by life. I live by faith, not by sight. down in glory and it's mine yes it's mine I met the author of my story and he's mine yes he's mine okay y'all so I normally don't always play in churches sometimes I play in some Other forbidden place. places that you know <laughs> not always supposed to go but one of the things I love to do is sing a sing-along are you guys ready to do that this one is just on one note, so even if you can't sing, it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's right. And this one is going to be all about proclaiming who you are because God tells you who you are. That's right. As Mr. Ed said this morning, we have faith in the promiser, not the promise. I mean, it's great to have faith in the promise, but the promiser is pretty cool too, and he yes. tells us who we are. So this is going to go just like this. I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because the I am. You got it? Yeah? I am. I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because the I am tells me who I am. There is a new name written down in glory, and he's mine. Yes, it's mine. Met the author of my story, and it's mine. Yes, it's mine. There is a new name written down in glory, and it's mine. Yes, it's mine. I met the author of my story, and he's mine. Yes, he's mine. And he's mine. Oh, yeah. And he's mine. Yes, he's mine. Yes, he's mine. You sounded wonderful.
Our next decoration is the poinsettia. This beautiful plant and its star-shaped formation of red leaves suggests the guiding star of Bethlehem. The crown inside reminds us of Christ the Lord, who was born the infant king. The blood-red leaves foreshadow the cruel cross that lay ahead for the king of glory on Calvary. Matthew 2, verses 1 through 6. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled and all of Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Matthew 27, verse 29. And when they had platted a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head, and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. You may stay seated, but we're going to sing a hymn if you want to. of the pine, fir, or cedar tree is generally believed to be of German origin and ascribed to Martin Luther. It is said that the great reformer wandered out one Christmas Eve and became so entranced in the wonder and beauty of the starry sky that he returned home and set up a tree for his children and decorated it with candles to represent the gracious heavens that had sent forth the Lord Jesus. In America, the tree found its way into the church when on a Christmas Eve in the 1800s, 
a young minister, Pastor Henry Schwann, newly arrived from Germany, brought a lighted tree into the sanctuary of his church in Ohio. The pastor set out to prove to his reluctant congregation that this was not a pagan practice, but a Christian custom. He researched and taught his congregation that this was indeed a custom that would enrich the sanctuary and our homes by honoring the Savior with our uprightness and with the light that will shine on those who see us. The Chrismon Ornament. Chrismon Tree. The ladies of our church worked many weeks this year to create the Chrismons for our first Chrismon Tree. The term Chrismons mean Christ monograms and traditionally are white and gold designs made from Christian symbols that signify Christ. When displayed on an evergreen tree during the Christmas season, symbols such as stars, crosses, fish, crowns, and the Alpha and Omega remind us of Christ's identity, his story, and of the Holy Trinity. Isaiah 60, verse 13. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I will make the place of my feet glorious. As we look upon the Christmas tree, may it remind us to turn to God who gifts the earth with great majesty and beautifies our lives with hope of not just heaven, but of a life here and now full of growth and strength and a means of offering hope to others. Before you set the edge of time, foundations of the earth and sky, you saw it all and said that it was good. And joy was set before your eyes, you knew that you would give your life. You saw it all and said that it was good. Behold, behold, the one I love is come. Behold, behold, the one our King is come. The heaven's work, the earth stood still, his final breath. He tore the veil, the angels sing, holy is his name. Defeated death, he broke the grave. Our newborn turned, the lost are saved. We lift our voice in never ending praise. Behold, behold, the one our love has come. Behold, behold.
forever. star, the star placed on top of the tree signifies the star of Bethlehem, as the light that glows from it is the light of those who tell the good news of Jesus. 2,000 years ago, a star was placed in the heavens by God to light the way to Jesus for the three wise men who would follow it to where he lay. This light now shines in each of us if we are his children, his followers. And our command is now to let that light shine so brightly that others will follow him too. Matthew 2, verses 7 through 12. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently, what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. And when they heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed unto their own company another way. Star, the hope of light, God. 
When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And coming into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. And they fell to the ground and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned by God in a dream not to return to Herod, the Magi left for their own country by another way. Stand with us as we sing, We Three Kings of Orient Are. We three kings of Orient are, bearing gifts we traverse afar. Remain standing. <laughs> Luke 2, verses 8 through 20. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. 
And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even until Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told to them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at these things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. That is now our command. Go and tell all that we have heard and seen, offering joy for us now and for eternity. You may sing with us. Angels, we have heard. plan of salvation and his endless mercy are represented by the wreath. The evergreen also reminds us of the promise of hope manifested in our eternal life that we are granted when we come to know Christ as Lord and Savior. John 3, verses 13 through 18. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but that he came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. As we place gifts around our trees and spend time doing all the necessary things for Christmas, let us be constantly reminded of the gift of God through the sending of his son, Jesus, who gives us eternal life freely and our hope of eternal life. This is a hope fulfilled in his coming 
and then in his dying for us. Romans 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Stand with us as we sing this glorious carol. seated. Holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth a thrill of hope the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn And in his name, 
all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise we. Let all within us praise his holy name. Christ is the Lord. All praise his name forever. His power and glory evermore. in some real ways, the most important part of the service is now. And the reason being is not because it's my part, but this is where we have the opportunity to get down to brass tacks. Do you know what that means? You remember before they had electronic and uh, ways of measuring material when a man or lady would go into a material house and it didn't negotiate on how much they wanted to buy and what kind they wanted to buy and how much they were going to pay for it. And, but when they were ready, you know, the, the guy would say, are you ready to get down to brass tacks? That means, are you ready to buy? Are you ready to do what needs to be done? And so every yard, they had a brass tack, getting down to brass tacks. And that's what, that's what it's about tonight is we've heard the gospel very, very clear tonight. The question is, are we going to get down to brass tacks with God? Are we going to get serious with him? Because this is our time to respond. People ask me, say, Preacher, do you always give an invitation? Let me say this. I've never given an invitation because it's not for me, because I have nothing for you. But the invitation comes from God, and what he has for you tonight is hope. You know, if you remember here, you've been visiting here a lot, you'll know we just got through going through Romans. And if you remember in the beginning of Romans, Paul tells us that we're all lost and we're hopeless because we're sinners. But if we'll just have the faith of Abraham, that we too can be saved. And then he goes on and tells us how to be sanctified and how to live together with each other and how to live in a right relationship with him. And then he closes out by talking about this glorious thing we call hope. And that's what tonight is all about. It's all about hope. And we have that hope if you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. If you, if you come to a place in your life where you understand the reason that he came to earth was for you, to give you hope, to give you salvation, to give you a better life, and we talk about a better life. There's nothing better in this whole world than having a relationship with Jesus. I know we've read a lot of scriptures tonight, but I want to share just a couple more scriptures with you about hope because I do believe with all my heart we're living in a day and age where we need hope. And we're running into people constantly in the marketplace and at home and next our next door neighbors. And some of them are hopeless. They have no hope. They've never come to a place in their life where they don't know Jesus maybe the way you do. Well, as we think about it, Romans 8.20, he says, For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected him to hope. In 8.24, he says, For in this we have hope that we're saved. That's where your hope is. That's where my hope is, is in the fact that we are saved. And it's not a hope that's seen. It's a hope that we haven't seen. Because who hopes in the things we've already seen? The things we've already seen we know to be real. But our hope we haven't seen, but we have that hope. Because we put our faith and trust in Christ. In Romans chapter 15, verse 12, he's quoting Isaiah. And he says again, he says, There shall come from the root of Jesse. And we know he's talking about Jesus. And he will arise and rule over the Gentiles. And in him will be the hope of Gentiles. Well, unless you're born of Jewish heritage then you're a Gentile. And our hope is not in our lineage. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. That's who the root of Jesse was. 
And then in chapter 15, verse 24, this is a reminder for our journey. And we are on a journey. He says, for this hope which I see in you in passing. Paul's going to go and visit them in Rome. He says, and I want you to help me along my way. He says, after I've had time and enjoyed your company for a while. What, what is, is he actually saying here? He said, we have fellowship together. Those of us who put our faith and trust in Christ. And we need to remember what Titus 2 verse 13 says. He says that we, those who are believers, those who put your faith and trust in Christ. He says, we're looking for that blessed hope and the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So if you've been challenged by the scriptures tonight, how will we respond? This is our time. It's our time to respond. Have you come to a place in your life where you know that you have eternal life? If you don't, there is no better time than right now. And rather than having you stand and come down, I'm just going to ask you to remain seated for just a moment. Would you just close your eyes and ask yourself that question, what if Jesus came back tonight? Would I be ready to go with him? Do I have that hope in my heart and know without any shadow of a doubt that when he comes for me, I'm one of his because my hope is not in me. It's not in our economy. It's not in all the things that's going on in the world. My hope is based in nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. That's what scripture says for those of us who have put our faith and trust in him. Are you amongst those? Can you say with all certainty, I'm signed up. My ticket's been purchased. Whenever the Lord comes back, I'm ready. If you can't, then I'm just going to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes and just ask you this question. Would you like to be saved tonight? I won't, I won't call you out. But if you, if you are not saved or if you're not sure you're saved, would you like for me to pray for you this next week? Would you just lift your hand up? No one looking around. Okay, I see that. Any others? Okay. Maybe you're a believer. Maybe you've got that hope and you know, but maybe somehow things just aren't right in your life. And maybe the reason you came tonight was you wanted that hope. And God knows you need that hope. You need that hope to get you through tomorrow, next week, and next month. And certainly in the months and years to come. Would you just lift up a hand? I'll be, I'll be glad to pray for you this week. Okay? All right? Okay.